intercessor. How many of y'all know that God has called us to be intercessors? Raise your hand if you're an intercessor. And it was, it was really an honest conversation that I had with someone. I was like, are you praying for Ukraine? And they were like, no, not really. And I was like, okay, why? And then it turned into a race conversation. And I said to them, I need you to look out the window and I want you to stand here and I want you to imagine that a bomb just dropped across the street. And I want you to imagine that someone is coming to take your freedom. I said, how does that make you feel right now? And then I want you to imagine if you were a child, what is that child feeling right now? As an intercessor, we sit in the seat that we feel what somebody else is feeling. And it goes beyond your race or your religion. Y'all better hear me. Um, we are called to be light in the midst of darkness. And I am asking you all to pray for this situation. There's a spirit on Putin. It is a spirit of pride. It is a spirit of, ang of, 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 um, of arrogance. Anytime that you think that you could just take what you want with no limitations, that thing is demonic. And now we have some Christians trying to validate him, saying that God put that thing in him. Believers of the Most High God, we, are, we need God like a fish need water. You better hear me. We need God to answer our prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The earth is the, come on here, and the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. So we're going to be interceding and praying because this is warfare. Because if he can get that, he might be coming for you next. All right? So I just want us to be in prayer. I just want us to be in prayer. Listen, I am black. I can't change that. I love black. I love being black. I don't want to be nothing else. But I'm a Christian before I'm black. I'm an intercessor before I'm black. I'm saved before I'm anything. And I want to make sure that his will is done in my life. All right? Let's get your Bibles. Okay, that was deep. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> Somebody put on my, on my Instagram page. I said, pray for Ukraine. Nope, they wouldn't be praying for us. I said, well, can you pray for the kids? Just pray for the kids then. Jesus, saints of the living God. God is love. And we are some hateful, angry, mean people. In Jesus' name, you will know the tree by the fruit it bear. Jesus. Can you all in the building, can you look at somebody and say, please be nice? If they didn't look nice, lay hands on them again. <laughs> all right, so I want to do this tonight. And um, Pastor Jamon did the 930 service. And he said something in that sermon that made me dive in my Bible. My Holy Ghost leaped when he explained that you're six degrees away. And if, if I were to do a recap, if you take notes, we dealt with the friendship thing of David and Jonathan. And on Sunday, we showed how they had something in common. We showed how they had communication. Um, Silence gives the enemy room to mess with your communication. And if I can beg friends to do anything, pick up the phone before you text. Because people can read an attitude in a text. You didn't mean it that way, but the way I read it made you feel guilty. So make sure you hear you rather than read you. So, but communication is key. The next thing we talk about was commitment. You have to be committed. The Bible let us know that Jonathan was committed to David to make sure, and he didn't even let his father come between it. Once he saw the wrong spirit on his father, then he chose what was right. You have to hear that. Once he saw the wrong spirit on his father, then he chose what was right. The last thing that we talked about was that the confirmation. You need friends that are gonna confirm you. 
and not be intimidated by you. The Bible says that Jonathan told David, you're going to be next. You're the next king. How does the prince who's supposed to sit in the throne next tell his friend, I'm willing to step back because I know you got the oil. I want to salute those of you all that are willing to humble yourselves under your friends. I salute you. When I begin pastoring, they say the hardest persons to pastor are your family and your friends. And I saw my friends had to transition from me just being a friend to me being their pastor. And it was a conscious decision for them to transition. Some people struggle transitioning you because they only want to see you out of one lens. But I need you to hear me. The oil on your life cannot be ignored. Rather than you trying to argue who you are, just tell God to show up. Come on here. They, watch me, they might not like you. Pay attention, but they have to respect the oil that is on your life. Come on here. Can everybody open your mouth and say, I'm anointed for this. So this six degrees, I looked it up, and I want you to look at the screen as we give it a, a, um, a definition. It says everyone on earth is basically separated from everyone else by only six people. You might be at person number three. When I begin to read this, this is why the enemy's trying to cut some of y'all off. Because if you ever make it to the right person, that's the person that's assigned to make sure you be everything God called you to be. So you can't let one bad encounter stop you from meeting your next. And we are in a day and time that people are saying, I don't need nobody. You better hear. That is the biggest lie on earth. You need people, but you need the right people. You don't need no more haters. You have enough. You don't need any more negative people in your circle. You don't even need to be around dysfunction anymore. You fought too hard to get out of crazy, then why marry it? Can everybody open your mouth and say, my steps are ordered by the Lord. God literally has to order your steps. Everyone on earth is theoretically separated from everyone else by only six people. Six people. Let me show you the scripture on, on your steps being ordered. Um, Psalms 37, verse 23 and 24, Living Bible. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in, his my line, every detail of, the, of their lives. He's into the small details of your life. This is why he didn't let certain people get close to you. This is why he hid you from some people and they never acknowledge you the way that you think that they should acknowledge you because if they really saw you, it only would have intensified your warfare. He's into the details of your life. He's into your entry level job. He's into your supervisor. He's into your, your work environment. He's into your living environment. He's into the community that you live in. He's He's into your business. He's into your business before you get into the business agreement. He's going to make sure that you don't agree with somebody who's not going to carry out. Then he'll let you, watch me, he might even let you connect with somebody, not for you to be like them, for you to learn what not to do. He's into every detail of your life. Let's go. Though they stumble, that is called life. Everybody hear me. Just because you stumble doesn't mean that he's not into you. I 
hate the devil because he want to make you feel like you're not strong, like you're not going to make it. The devil is an accuser. He is a liar. Watch me. God gives you room to stumble. He gives you room to fall, but he also, why? Because he wants you to know what restoration feel like. So if a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest ye also be tempted. You're going to help somebody get up because you got up. <laughs> Though they stumble, this Bible is no joke, joke. They will never never fall for the Lord holds them up by the hand can everybody open your mouth and make a declaration throw your head back and say God you got me come on here throw your head back come on here can you type it on the screen can you throw your head back and say God you got me and my steps have been ordered by you Hallelujah, God, you got me. And my steps have been ordered by you. Though I stumble, I'm going to get right back up. Yay, Shia. Ready? Go to Proverbs 20 and 24. The Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? Bible. The Lord directs our steps. So why are you trying to figure out everything? Control freaks, you better hear this Bible. You better read this thing because some of y'all, you scared to move because you don't understand what God is up to. The Lord directs our steps. So why try? to understand everything. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Why are you trying to figure it out? Just do what he tell you to do. I would rather be uncomfortable in his will than be comfortable out of his will. Everybody throw your head back and say, my steps have been ordered by God and I'm headed in the right direction. Come on, say that again. My steps have been ordered by God. And I'm headed in the right direction. I'm meeting the people that I'm supposed to meet. I'm leaving the people that I'm supposed to leave. I'm connecting with the people that I'm supposed to be connected with. I'm surrounded with the right village in the right community. So I added the people up that David had to come in contact with to get to Jonathan. I went back in scripture and I started adding. We first read about him in 1 Samuel 16. For everyone inside of my voice, God's gonna bring you in front of someone that don't know you, but they have the oil to anoint you. Somebody has to put oil on you. You better hear me. I'm not just talking about preaching either. There are people that are anointed in business. There are people that are anointed in the area that you're in. God's going to bring you, watch me, into anointing me, watch me, not so much laying hands, to be anointed means to be brushed up on. You're going to be in an environment, you just might brush up on them, might bump up against them, but the oil that is on them just got on you. Anointed in real estate. Anointed in daycare. Anointed in business. Whatever area you in, God's going to bring somebody that got the oil to just brush up on you to make sure that that thing get on you. Let's go Bible. The first one. Person number one was Samuel. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, all right and anoint him. This is the one. I need you to open your mouth and say, I am the one. <laughs> if 
if you don't be excited about you, then why are you expecting somebody else to be excited about you? You're the one that's anointed to be a curse breaker. You're the one that's anointed to bring your family out of certain things. You're the one that's anointed to live where you live, work where you work. Then the Lord said, Arise without him asking, without him asking, and anointed him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil, here's my line, and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. Why is the Bible emphasizing his brothers? Because they thought that it was going to go according to order. When his father sent for the brothers, they brought the oldest ones in first. Because if anybody gonna be, in, watch me, it's gonna be in this order. Don't even bring David in. He's the youngest one. He's number eight. Y'all ain't gotta say nothing to me. He's not even counted. But some of y'all, you have not been counted, but God's about to send somebody to you to let you know, watch me, that you got it. I came to let somebody know you are the one. And I got the well that let you know you got it on your life. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you you got it. So I need you to walk in it like you got it. You don't have to prove nothing to nobody. Everybody throw your head back again and shout, I'm the one. And I'm going to meet my Samuel. I need you to say that line. And I'm going to meet my Samuel. And I'm going to meet an oil carrier who not going to be intimidated by me, but going to be willing to share the oil. I wish y'all ain't saying that to me right now. I need somebody that when God tell them to put their hands on me, I need them not to be scared when God tell them to bless me. Look down your road, look at somebody, tell them you are anointed for this. You can't do it without the anointing. And God will make sure that he bring you in front of somebody that got the oil to empower you. Let me calm down. So number one person that he meets was Samuel, the oil carrier. And I'm begging some of y'all to ask God to put you in front of some oil carriers people who got the oil to do what he's called you to do you ain't got to sit up under them all the time you just need to be around them for a little while let me get that up off for you y'all ain't scared y'all look 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 let me get that up off for you once I get that up off of you you ain't got to stay with me every day you ain't got to call me every day but I want to make sure that I get what God told me I'm supposed to get come on do this say God send me the oil carriers So then the Bible says, number two comes in, and it is a servant. And this is somebody that was, has been watching you, watch me, and can see favor on your life. You have to hear me. Their responsibility in your life is to acknowledge your favor and bring it up at the right time. While David is at home, the Bible says, and an evil spirit from the Lord, you should read that, came upon Saul what does that mean an evil spirit from the Lord in other words God allowed an evil spirit to hit Saul so that he can send for David some things God gonna allow for other people just to get you where you are supposed to be and the Bible said when this evil spirit got on Saul please pay attention because some of y'all running around running behind people trying to get them to see you you I'm sick of you. <laughs> you are not going to be kissing nobody behind, tap dancing, trying to make sure that they see you. You do you. Just keep doing you. Watch the servant. One of the servants answered, here's the line, I have seen a son of of Jesse of Bethlehem, who knows how to play the lyre. He is a brave man and a warrior. 
He speaks well and is a fine looking young man. Pay attention. And the Lord is with him. He don't even know his name. He just know I know what I saw. Y'all, and I saw him doing what he do. I saw something on that boy that ain't normal. It's called the favor of God. And I got to bring him up at the right time to get him out of the field, to get him into the palace because the palace is really his destination. Listen carefully. So he's, he's brought up in the palace while he's in the field. Somebody saw him doing what he do. I am begging some of y'all, be not weary in well-doing. I am begging you, keep doing what you're doing. It'll shock you who's looking at you. Your name is going to be brought up and you're going to be sent for and they're going to ask, how did you get here? Favor was on your life. My God, if I were you, I'd just release my name and the spirit ran right here and pray that somebody would see me and then find out who I am and then sent for me. Why? I didn't have to do anything. I was just doing what I was doing. And he can play. His gift for every gifted person I need you to hear me. I need your gift to be bigger than your request for money. <laughs> Sometimes it's not about the money, it's about the opportunity. And if you just given one touch, just get me in front of the person at the right time and watch my favor pay off. I'm gonna give you a chance to release your name and I pray that the right person see you. And then when they see you, I pray that they bring you up because you could do what they can't do and they're not trying to do what you do, but they're going to bring you in, pay attention, to only do what you've been doing. You're not going to be sent to do something that you can't do. Everything that you've been doing has been preparing you to be called on. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Everything that you've been doing has been preparing you for this one send-off. Those of you that know that you are focused on your assignment and you know that your ladder is going to be greater, you know that God has promised you something bigger than what you have right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to release your name. I want the right person to see you. Then I want them to bring you up at the right time. Then I want them to see for you. And then you're going to know that it was nothing but favor that got you in the room with them. One, two, three. You're going somewhere. Person number two is your favor connection. Look at somebody and say, I pray you meet your favor connection. I pray you meet your oil connection. I pray you meet your favor connection. Here's my next line. I pray you meet your future. I pray you see your future. God's about to give you a glimpse of where you going. <laughs> Number one, you're going to meet your oil carrier. Number two, you're going to meet your favor person. Number three, you're going to meet your future. Because when he poured the oil on him, he said, you're going to be the next king of Israel. But I got to get you in the palace so you can see how kings live. I have to expose you. Because if I don't expose you, all you'll think that only thing that life consists of is a field. And you are bigger than the field that you've been in. You ready? Your future is about to meet you. You're going to go in the room not to take the seat yet, but I got to get you around the seat so you can get some of the mannerisms and the behaviors so that you can hear the lingo, the language, so that you can see how kings sit, so that you can see how kings act. I'm going to put you into an internship position just so that you can see how you're going to be. This is not your permanent position, 
but it's going to be your permanent palace. <laughs> Let's go. This thing messed me up. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much. Can everybody repeat after me? My future is going to like me. Come on, I need you to say this one right here. My future is going to like me. Come on, y'all, say it again. My future. Y'all worried about people that it's part of your past liking you, and I'm trying to get your future. Person number three is your future. And Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor bears. I don't care how many more armor bears he got, but there will only be one me. And some of y'all were here before I got here, but you didn't know, you don't know what I heard in my spirit. So let me go ahead and play this role out, knowing that one day I'm gonna sit in the seat. But before I can sit in the seat, I have to serve to the seat. Because oh. he that is great among you must become servant. It's not beneath me to serve you because as I serve you, I'm really only setting myself up for my future. I wish I had some servants in the building because when I pray for you, I'm really only setting myself up David became one of his armor bears. Then Saul sent word to Jesse. Shift, shift, allow David to remain in my service. For I am pleased with him not only is your future gonna like you your future is about to be pleased with you oh my god I feel the anointing as I teach this thing I have what Pastor Hannah why do you always have us repeating something because the power of life and death is in your tongue and I should have never read that scripture and I will give you exactly what I heard you say. So I need you to open up and say, my, my future is going to like me and my future is going to be pleased with me. Shift. I need to get him out that field so much. And I need him to spend a little, more, a little bit more time in the palace. You think you're bringing me in for one thing, but God got something else set up for me. And for some of y'all, you are literally have been in contact with where you are going. Just because I introduce you to it does not mean that it's going to happen for you right now. Because there's some lessons that you have to learn by watching the present king. If you watch the present one, you're going to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're going to learn what to do, and you're also going to learn what not to do. I'm bringing you close so that you can get a close look on everything because you need to see what goes with you. You need to see the power. You need to see the influence. You need to see the temptations. You need to see all of this that go with this seat because if you go higher than the seat that you're taking, your warfare is going to be greater. Future. Let's go. Allow David to remain in my service. I am pleased with him. Whenever the spirit from God, that evil spirit, came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul. Stop. God would keep letting the evil spirit get on Saul. Problem? Send for the person who can solve it. You come in, you do you, and the problem is solved. For some of y'all, I don't need you to be like nobody else. Come in here, do you, and watch you being relieved to the whole room. 
You got to hear me now. You keep comparing yourself to other people who play. They can play better than you, but they ain't got the oil. You have to hear me now. I am watching some people. You keep looking at people who can play better than you. Look at me, but they don't have favor. They don't have oil. They don't even have God. But because he promised you something, you got to just do you. You have to hear me. So I speak. This is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. What I didn't know is that they were calling me to do poems before I was preaching. I have to get up and do dramatic readings. One time, Elder Campbell put me up in Memphis at Bishop Pastor Church, and I do a reading called Great Day. In that great day, people in that great day, God's going to rain down fire. I'm doing my reading, and my mind went blank. I'm standing there looking at thousands of people, and I forgot what I... And I said, the blood of Jesus. I said, I'm sorry, saints. I forgot. I was walking back to my seat. Elder Campbell said, John, get back up here and do it again. I said, oh, God, please. Please, God. I got up, I said, saints... And I tried to do it again, and then I went blank. The other camera said, go on, sit down. I went sitting down. I went to sit down, and I walked past Elder Camel's brother named Frizel. Frizel looked at me and said, John, come here. You just made a darn fool of yourself in front of all these people. That was a lesson. That was a lesson. I need you to hear me, because the enemy thought that if I make you feel bad now, you'll never pick up a mic later. Y'all not hearing me. Though you stumble, what that Bible say, though you stumble, you'll never. And some of y'all, you have stumbled and he allowed you to stumble, not to kill you, but to make you better. That's supposed to build up your confidence. Woo! Throw your head back and repeat after me, God got me. I'm in Bishop Patterson's church only doing a poem. I'm with Elder Bishop Willie James Campbell only being an armor bearer and serving him and reading poems not knowing that when I was in Bishop Patterson's presence I was getting the oil to build. I'm doing one thing, but I'm being anointed to do another thing. And some of y'all, the Lord keep telling me, I need you to open your eyes. I have brought you in face to face with your future. You have looked at eyeball to eyeball, but you were too blind to see it. Woo! Come on here. I need you to let the devil know he's not winning. Your steps are being ordered by God. You're meeting the right people and eventually you're going to make it to your destination. Lift your hands and worship God if you believe your steps are ordered by God. You've met some anointed people. You've met some people that saw favor on you and called you. You then saw your future. The next person he meets is Goliath. Do me a favor. I want to flip something, if you don't mind. To the person that's doing screen works, do me a favor. Can you flip this to make number five, number four? Um, there's another servant, but it's who you least expect before I get you to Goliath. You gonna meet somebody and it's who you least expect. And this is why I am about being in certain places. I'm about, one thing I am, I'm, I'm consistent. I am, I am a consistent person. I'm a man of my word. If I tell you something, if I tell you I'm gonna be somewhere, I'm gonna be there. I used to be late. I had no disrespect, but I had a Kojic spirit. We always started church late. We were never on time. I had that spirit. One of my best friends, Robert Jones, who was Baptist. Baptist people are always on time. And me and Robert were going out and I would always show up late. 
and he got in my face when they said, bruh, we ain't doing this. You gonna have to be on time. He was the one that put a demand on me to be on time. And for some of you all, God is bringing you in front of certain people who are supposed to be sharpening you to make sure you get where you're supposed to get. Here David goes to the field, watch me serve it again, to drop some food off. Goliath comes out, watch me, and he asks him a question, what will be done to the one who handles this? Who are you? Don't forget, you solve problems. When, when an evil spirit came on Saul, who did they send for? They saw you. So now you come out here and you see a giant, you see something, because you a problem solver. It wakes something up in you that everybody else run from. You have to hear me. Watch me. Don't downplay your wake up. Do not downplay what make your spirit leap. Everybody else is running and you standing there like, who, what, what, what? This is gonna be part of your promotion. This has been sent to be a part to make sure you make it to your destination. It's a problem to everybody else, but it's a launch to you. He turns and asks a question, pay attention. What will be done to the one that handles this? His brother butts into the conversation. What you doing down here? Who did you leave those few sheep with? I know how average you get you are and suck up. What, you, what is it? That is a family member trying to throw you off from making it to your destination. What? P pay attention. This, he want to have an argument. Oh, you mad. You want to argue. I ain't arguing with you. You mad. The Bible said, David said one thing, can I not speak and turn to talk to somebody who could give him answers? Y'all better hear me. You have allowed some people to pull you in to unnecessary disagreements that you'll waste your energy arguing over stupid stuff when you're supposed to be on the battlefield dealing with bigger issues. I came to tell somebody, I'm about to cut off your arguments. I'm about to bind every devil that's trying to get you off track. I pray that... Here's my line, you ready? Verse 30. He then turned away. He turned his back on his brother. And for somebody on the sound of my voice, you're going to have to turn your back on people who think they know you. Conversation is going to have to be little. And he turned his back, bring it up, bring it to trip. And he turned away to someone else and brought the same matter up. And the men answered him as before. What David said, his line, was overheard and reported to Saul and Saul sent for him. Had he fought his brother, then that would have been reported. That would have stopped you from being called on. But a, a conversation was heard that you could handle this. And that is person number four who you least expect has been watching you, has been listening to you, and is about to watch me bring up what you said. This is why you have to be careful how you talk, when you talk to certain people, because it'll blow your mind who listening to you. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me now. He's about to season your words with grace. He's about to make sure that the right one hear you and then they're going to run to somebody who can call you to your next. You've already met Saul in the palace, but you've never seen him on the battlefield. You ready? So person number four was who he least expect. He overhears a conversation. Hear me clearly. Somebody is going to bring up something. Pay attention. You said. 
What you said is about to be tested. What you say you could do, you about to be called to see if you can do it. Oh, y'all, come on. You are about to be called to do what you said you can do. I need you to say, I got this. Come on, go back to your first person. Don't feel, you got the oil to do it. Come on here. You anointed to do this. Please open up and say, I'm anointed for this. You ready? So number one was the oil carrier. Number two was the servant for, future, for, for, for favor. Number three was future. Number four was who you least expect. Number five, your challenge. A challenge is a part of your promotion. You have to hear me. A challenge is a part of your promotion. A go Goliath, a champion. Why is he called the champion? Because he slayed so many before now. Just because they were slain don't mean you're going to be slain. Look at me. Just because they failed don't mean you're going to fail. I need y'all to lean in. I'm about to, be, I'm, about to, I'm about to have some real honest, transparent conversation with you. So I have heard that anytime a preacher build, it takes at least 10 to 15 years off their life. They told me that any pastor that build, that it's going to take so much off of their life. Then I heard another pastor say, when you build, you're going to lose more sheep than what you had. I listen. I listen, but I didn't accept it. Y'all didn't hear me. So what I did was when I listened, I knew what to pray against. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. Because you're going to meet this giant. Watch me. And I need you to hear me clearly. Everything that they said, the enemy was bringing it like a Goliath in my face. Watch me. When you build it, you ain't going to have that many people. When you build it, you're going to get sick. There's a man on, 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 on Facebook and Instagram right now, a pastor, who went viral. He sat in front of his whole church. He said, I've been doing this for 17 years. He said, but I feel like I cannot do it anymore. He said, pastoring is enough. Pay attention. Pastoring during a pandemic is worse. Pastoring during a pandemic in the middle of a construction site, it has worn me out. I can't take no more. I'm not healing. I said, God, I'm going to pray for him. But before I pray for him, can I thank you that it didn't hit me like they said that it would hit me. And I came to let some of y'all know it slayed others, but it's... Ooh! Ooh! You keep looking at what happened to somebody else. It's not going to happen to you. I need you to look at somebody and tell them that would not be your story. But everybody else's business is going down. Your business is not going down. But everybody else's ministry is closing. Your ministry is not closing. prayed for him I really did but before I went into prayer for him I went into praise I said God this is proof this is proof but can I give you praise that it didn't happen to me and I came to let some of y'all know you owe God up you owe God up you owe was supposed to happen but it didn't happen and for that I give you come on y'all I need you to type it on the screen I win Come on, y'all. I need you to find a champion around you. Look at somebody and tell them, you got this. You got this. What happened to them is not going to happen to you. 
Your testimony is going to be different. You're original. You're different than anybody else. They had to prove it in five fights. You will prove it in one. Hey, everybody that's being challenged right now, I need you to lift your hands and worship God like you won everything that's challenging you. You gotta face your Goliath. You have to face your Goliath. You must get in the face of what took somebody else out. Coming on your way to your seat. Look at somebody, tell them you got this. Type it on the screen, you got this. Goliath, a challenge, a challenge, a challenge, a challenge. Goliath, it slayed a lot of people, but it's not designed to slay you. And you can't ignore it, it's a challenge. You can't ignore that this is your challenge. How do you face your challenges? How do you face your challenges? Number five was Goliath. And as the Philistine moved closer, can I, can I just give you some, some history? The Bible says, watch this, that the children of Israel are on one mountain, the Philistines on another, and there's a valley. Goliath, come on camera person, come on, go down those stairs. Come on, go down, you go down. <laughs> Goliath would come down here twice a day and challenge the children of Israel. The Bible said that they would run. Every day he would come down there and say, come on, bring it on. The Bible said that the children of Israel would run back up on their mountain. If you read it in the King James Version, King James says, and say, and he began to come up on them. What does that mean? Since you wouldn't fight me in, your, in the valley, I'm now going to come up on your mountain and start taking what territory? You have to hear me. If you keep ignoring your challenge, it begins to take more territory. You have to address it to get it off your mountain. And watch me. And you don't wait on it to get you. Y'all better hear me now. You have to literally, you better hear me. You have to, and church people don't want to hear this. You have to face your challenge. We like sweeping it under the rug. We like shouting around it. We like ignoring it, stepping over it. No, this devil needs to be slain because if you don't kill it, it's going to kill your house. Bring it up. And as the Philistine moves closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. He, gained, he ran quickly. You ain't coming up on this mountain again. I'm going to meet you right where you want to be met at. And I'm going to make sure that I give you something that you wasn't even expecting. Watch me. Saul tried to give me his armor, but I had not ever used that before. I'm only called to do me. And some of y'all keep trying to be somebody else. And God say, I've only anointed you to be you. And with one stone, he ran, he reached, he won, and he released. He collected five, but you won't need everything you collect. Something that's been coming after you, all it's going to take is one touch, one stone, one shout, 
one opportunity and you're going to kill it. All you need is one challenge. Come on, y'all. I know you're sweating, but you're ready for this. Come on, get on your feet. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. You ready for this. You ready for this. That's number five. Number one was the oil carrier. Number two was the favor caller. Number three was the future. Number four was who you least expect. Number five was your challenge. You got to hear me. And you always going to have a big challenge before you meet your final person. You always going to have a big challenge before you meet the person who you're supposed to meet. And some of y'all, you only at three. I'm going to need you to keep it moving. I'm going to need you to keep meeting people. I'm going to need you not to cut nobody off. Uh-oh, speak Holy Ghost. I rebuke your shyness. <laughs> Can everybody say, I'm about to meet my Jonathan. Come on, say, I'm about to meet my Jonathan. You ready? So after he, let, let's, let me give you a little bit more history. Ever look. He hit him with one stone and he fell down. He climbed on top of what he had knocked down. And then he grabbed his sword and cut his head off. Why did he cut his head off? It's proof. Some of y'all want to be promoted, but you don't have proof. You got to hear me. Saul sent for David and he was still holding on to Goliath's head. Saul said something that messed me up. Now, who are you? Whose son is this? This is not your first time meeting him. This is the same one that played the, the, the harp for you. This is the same one that was serving you. This is the same, this is the same one. Why, why are you acting like You've never seen him before. Because I only saw him as an armor bearer. Now I have to see him as a champion. Some of y'all want to be seen different, but you're not holding nothing. You want to be seen different, but nothing's changed. You have to hold a challenge in your hand as proof of who you are. You have to hear me. Somehow, I'm this, I'm that. Wait, well, I see nothing on you. You're the same person. No. So he's standing up with the hand, the head in his hand. And then a conversation starts. Here's the connection. Person number six. Divine connection. After David finished talking with Saul Jonathan became one in spirit with David he loved his mark as himself watch me but we just met God's gonna connect you with somebody who going to make up for what the other ones didn't do. You have to hear me. You have to get this revelation. They going to grab you so fast that there's a part of you going to think, oh, I'm uncomfortable. You wonder why you're uncomfortable? Because you're not used to being loved like this. You're not used to being lifted like this. You're not used to being blessed like this. You're not used to being acknowledged like this. So your last person is going to make up for what number one, two, three, four, and five didn't do. Do you hear me? Let's go further. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return 
home to his family. Hear me clearly. Some of you all, saints, I need y'all to hear me. Your address is going to change so fast. Your location is going to come swiftly. Your zip code. Hmm. How did you get there? Nothing shifted like this until I got connected with Jonathan and things just start changing. Things just start changing. It didn't change until there was a click between you. Watch me. And you didn't have to ask for it. It gets better. Can everybody else? He said, I'm about to be loved the way I want to be loved. <laughs> and I'm about to shift like I want to shift. Say this one line with me. And I'm about to be blessed like I want to be blessed. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Lift your hands again and say that line again. And I'm about to be blessed like I want to be blessed. You got to get this. You got to get this. You got to get this one. This, this right here messed me up. And for some of y'all, this explains why the devil tried to kill you. This explains why he tried to stop you. Because had you never made it here, because number six is about to give you what number one and number two couldn't give you. Number three would never give it to you. So they'll never give it to you. Number five didn't have it to give to you. But number six have the resources to give you what you need without you asking. And they won't fall short either. Pay attention. And they won't hold it over your head later. And some of y'all have a hard time receiving. You struggle receiving because you're so used to giving. Anybody like me? That's me. That's me. I struggle when people want to give me something. Like, no, I'm, I'm straight. I'm straight. Shut your face. What they offer you is what you've never had before. Watch this. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. And Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing. Stop. That is the robe of royalty. That is the robe that only the king or the prince wear. And now, when you were told that you're going to be next king, look at me. It was not announced out loud. It was whispered in your ear. So now I'm about to give you something that's going to validate my whisper. Your appearance is about to change. You will no longer look like a shepherd boy because your, your appearance has to match your relocation. And for some of y'all, you fighting that God is changing your appearance. He handed him his robe along with his tunic, even his sword, his bow, and even gave him his belt. I'm giving you the belt to keep everything up on you. I'm giving you the sword because where you are right now, bro, you can't use no sling. You're going to need a sword to fight with. So I'm going to give you everything you need to make sure you get to your destiny. Hear me clearly. You will never read what David said. You know I'm going to be next king, don't you? You know I'm going to be next king. But you know who told David you're going to be next king? Jonathan. The person that's going to come in your life is not only going to release resources, it's going to release validation. 
I could teach this all day. Hear me clearly. And I don't want you to miss your opportunity. Look at me, look at me. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. I knew that I was called to be a pastor. I couldn't figure this thing out. God had, I never, I never shared it. Choco was the one that looked at me and said, I see what's in you. I see what's on you. I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to plant it. Choco was the one, watch me, please hear me. No disrespect. Elder Campbell had never anointed me to be an elder in the church of God in Christ. He had never given me papers to say that I was part of Kojic. Never gave them to me. But I served him for 19 years. Some of y'all want papers. What is it going to do? What is it going to do? Where is it going to take you? You sit up here, well, I need my ordination paper. to do what? I can't marry nobody. Go downtown. Go to the city hall. Get your license. Look at me. Look at me. I never argued over papers. I never argued over papers. You should be an elder by now. I don't need to be no elder. I'm straight. Y'all running around here want titles. I got the oil. I got the oil. And some of y'all, I need you to thank God that you have the supernatural more than you have a degree. I need you to thank God that you got the favor more than you have a master's degree. I need you to thank God that you got his grace more than you have a doctorate degree. I see what's on you. After four years, he said, now go find your place. Go find your place. He said, I found it. He said, how much it costs? He paid my first three months rent. He bought a first sound system. Took me to the bank. I didn't have a PIN number, 501c3. Use mine until you get your own. Open up your own bank account so that you can start learning how to run your own business. Hear me clearly. The same oil on me is about to get on y'all. God's about to put you in front of people without you even asking. Things are about to be handed to you. I need you to reach your hand out like you're going to accept something. Come on a few more seconds. Era say shake Randada Bahaya. Your steps are being ordered by the Lord. 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 Be not weary in well doing. 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 You have to hear me. You have to hear me. It's going to be supernatural. It's going to be unexplainable. You don't even have the background, but you got the oil. You don't have the expertise, but you got the favor. And favor is about to pay off. I need to hear worship in the building for those of you all that know that God promised you something but it hasn't happened yet, but do you still believe? But do you still believe? But do you still believe? Play. Come on, catch your breath. You got things to do. Catch your breath. You have things to accomplish. Catch your breath. You're going somewhere. Come on. Lift up your head. Hold ye gates. Your steps are being ordered by the Lord. Come on, give me 10 more seconds. I need you to worship God. I need
need your favor to be heavy. I need the oil to be on your life. I need a servant to hear you. I need the right person to see you. I need your name brought up. I need a person in the seat. I need to get you in the room in front of them. I need to get you in the room with greatness. I need to get you in the room with somebody who own it. I need to put you at the table of a millionaire. I need to put you around somebody who's already doing what you're about to do. Hooray! If you believe that your steps have been ordered by the Lord, release your worship right here. Release your worship. Lift up your head. Your gift is about to make room for you. Lift up your head. It's bigger than you. Come on, a few more seconds. All of it's going to pay off. Slay your Goliath. Slay. one more assignment too actually I want to show you this last scripture in Isaiah message Bible look at the screen look at this I am your God I am God your God who teaches you how to live right and well I will show you what to do and where to go. I got you. I'ma show you what to do and I'ma show you where you're gonna go to meet your click, 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 click. Those in the building, I need you to do what I tell you to do. I need you to fist bump six people and just say click. I command a click to come on you. A click. I command your Holy Ghost to turn. Click. Count. You have to do six. Count. 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 Somebody going to see your favor. Click. 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 Somebody gonna see you and make sure your name is brought up. It's gonna be supernatural. It's gonna be a miracle. I need you to release the praise for the word that the Lord is releasing at the top of the month but the end of the first quarter Shaya randadaba sheke rosoto remi andadama siki andadaba yay and it's going to happen before the quarter end it's going to happen tone before the quarter end which means that it's going to happen this month I need you to hear me. I had to preach in Virginia last night on the supernatural. And the Lord said, pay attention to the timing. I'm bringing you in at the top of the month of March. But I'm bringing you in at the end of the first quarter. 
So what I'm about to do in your life has to be done before the month ends. Is there anybody believe that God's about to bring you in front of the right person before the month is out? Release a... Go! Next person, hear the word of the Lord. Stop looking for everything to come from one person. 
<laughs> Stop looking for everything to come from one person. They can only give you what they have. And once they give you what they have, then the question is, then who's next? Those of you that believe that your steps are ordered by God and that you're going in the right direction, clap your hands and release some praise right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you can be seated. I love this Bible. I love this Bible. Fist bump somebody else, say click. I thought I had missed my season at one point because I was looking at everybody else and I didn't understand why God was making me wait until I was 40. Why are you making me wait until I'm 40? And he made me realize I wasn't ready. If I gave you all of this at a young age, you would have messed it up. So I have to make sure that you're mature enough to handle the blessings. Because when so much is given to someone so young, you have a tendency of messing it up. And for some of y'all, I need you to know it's coming. They that wait on the Lord. Oh my God. And it's not too late. It's not too late. I pray that you heard the word of the Lord tonight. I have learned. You want to hear something amazing? I said this before. I was serving Elder Campbell when he went to go preach for Bishop Jakes. I remember going to sit at a table and never opened my mouth, never said one word, and just sat like a servant. Never added to the conversation. I had nothing to say because I was only there to serve. And it took about 15 years later for my name to be called. And say, what you served someone else to do now it's your turn to do it. I came to let somebody know he has not forgotten about you. If you, I need you to do like David. Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. I need you to encourage yourself in the Lord. God cannot lie to me. It has to come to pass. Lift your hands and worship God for that has to. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I hear the Holy Ghost. So somebody, you're going to get an offer, but it cannot be a money decision. It has to be a purpose decision. It cannot be a money decision. It has to go with your whisper. If you go for money, then you just sold your whisper out. Every opportunity is not a God opportunity. Some things come to get you off track. Can you open your mouth and say, and I cannot be sold. <laughs> come on, let's get our tithes and our offering ready. I need you to so 26, 36, 56, 26, 36, or 56. Hallelujah. I'm going to sow a thousand and six. <laughs> Cause I'm looking for something big. I got a business deal on the table and I need it to come to pass. The Lord has always told me that I cannot be dependent upon the church to pay me. 
So he's given me so many other streams that I'm well taken care of. Some of you all, the same oil on me is supposed to be on you. Your job is not your source. Come on, say my job is not my source. Come on, say it again. My job is not my source. How do you give? You can text and give. You can give on our app. You can give on our website. If you want to mail it in, you can mail it in. But if you look at the screen, you can see how to give. If you're going to text, you text NLCSC to 91694. Some of y'all are serving your way right into your blessing. <laughs> and it's going to be big. <laughs> I love it. Come on, get your seat ready. Come on, stand to your feet. If you're going to text and give text the words NLCSE to 91694, lift your seat up to the Lord. Can you worship God for the seed that you have? If you didn't have the 26, then you get the best thing that you can in your hand. It might be six cent. It might be a dollar and six. It might be six dollars. But I need you to lift your seat up to the Lord. Repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. Come on, say this. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are you living in? For the rest of my life. Do me a favor, won't you? If you have an envelope on you at the building, you'll see a safe. Can I get you all do me one favor before you leave? Can you stretch your hands this way? I need you to cover me in prayer. I flew back from Virginia. I preached in Virginia last night. Got back in Chicago at 4.30, ran home, got something to eat change clothes, freshen up, came to church and got to go home and pack another bag because I have a flight tomorrow going to Houston to preach in Houston, Texas and coming right back on Saturday to be back in the pulpit on Sunday. Can you pray for me for like 20 seconds right here? Just for 20 seconds. Pray for my strength, pray for my vocal cords, pray that it be anointed and that he speak loud and clear. Last night was amazing. Come on. I keep telling y'all, say your name. I got my phone call today to go preach in London. <laughs> I keep telling y'all, y'all better learn how to do what I do. Say your name. It's thing work. And my name is going across the waters. You better hear me. Look at me. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to encourage some of you all. You just keep doing you. You just keep doing you. Stay focused and be consistent. My office told me, they said, Pastor Hannah, you got over 150 invites to come and preach. That ain't going to happen. Don't clap. That ain't going to happen. But I need my steps to be ordered on where I'm supposed to go and who I'm supposed to be with. So what am I saying? The same God that did it for me is going to do it for you. You all are under this house. This oil is on this house. Whatever your thing is, you are going to have it. You're going to see it. You're going to touch it. You're going to experience it. I just feel a worship like that. Give me 10 seconds and I'm going to let you go. Worship God for 10 seconds. Just 10. Hallelujah. Consider yourselves dismissed. Pray for me. I got to go home and pack. I love y'all. Those online, Sunday, first Sunday of the month, we're going into a new series, The Games of Life. I need you in the building if you're in the city of Chicago, 7.30, 9.30, or 12.30. Some of y'all, I need you to back at Bible study, back at 4 a.m. prayer. Tuesday coming up is a 4 a.m. prayer day, and I'll be in the building. That's our leader, Sore Wars. I'm coming to church. I love you all. Good night. <laughs>